Tonight, the city of Bryant has a new mayor, Rhonda Sanders. She was sworn in this afternoon. Thank you for joining us tonight at 530. I'm Sarah Horvakowitz. Sanders is the president and CEO of the Greater Bryant Chamber of Commerce. She'll serve as mayor until a special election next March. Um, I'm excited, I'm humbled, a little emotional, all those things. Uh, you know, it's uh, such an opportunity to serve my city, and I really do love this city. Uh, recognizing it's going to be fast, it's only going to be for a short time, but I want to help us pull things together and to have a wonderful plan for the future. The appointment comes after former mayor Alan Scott resigned earlier this month. That followed an EEOC complaint and a vote of no confidence from the city board. Sanders lost to Scott in the mayoral election in 2022. Bipartisanship saved the day just hours before the federal government was set to shut down. But the road to reaching a long term spending deal could be a bumpy one. Meanwhile, President Biden is urging Congress to pass legislation to provide more funding for Ukraine's war against Russia. Skylar Henry is in Washington, D.C. with the latest. The day after Congress averted a federal government shutdown, President Biden warned Republicans that time is running out for providing more money for Ukraine. We cannot, under any circumstance, allow American support for Ukraine to be interrupted. Before Saturday's midnight deadline, the president signed a 45-day government funding package after Congress passed the bill in the nick of time. Enough is enough is enough. This is not that complicated. The brinkmanship has to end. And there should be another, there shouldn't be another crisis. The deal will keep the government running through mid-November, but items including border security could make a longer term spending agreement an uphill battle. After trying to take our government hostage, MAGA Republicans won nothing. The spending deal passed with bipartisan support. We're going to make sure we keep it open while we finish the job we're supposed to do. But Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was forced to give up demands for steep spending cuts from his party's extreme right flank and instead relied on help from Democrats. That could put McCarthy's speaker job in peril. I do intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to this rip week. off the Band-Aid. I think we need to move on with new leadership. The Speaker responded on CBS's Face the Nation. That's nothing new. He's tried to do that from the moment I ran for office. I'll survive. The stopgap spending plan includes $16 billion in disaster relief. That kind of funding is aimed at helping with scenes like Friday's extreme flooding in New York. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. If Congress had failed to reach a deal, federal workers would have faced furloughs. More than 2 million active duty and reserve military troops would have had to work without pay and programs. Now we've had yet another warm day across central Arkansas today, even as we start to move into the evening hours. Quite a few places seeing those temperatures in the 90s right now, holding on to 92 degrees here in the capital city. A little bit warmer over in Pine Bluff, 94 down there. Now central Arkansas is seeing some of the warmest temperatures across the state, but the main story is this above average temperatures that we're going to see through Tuesday. We're seeing hot and dry through Tuesday. We've got some some rain chances coming up around midweek and we're going to be seeing even below average temperatures by next weekend. We're going to talk about the why and the timing coming up later on. So make sure you stick around. Well, today people in Pine Bluff has a new place to exercise, get fit and have fun. THV 11's Rebecca Brown has more on how this new facility is making a difference in the community. Family, friends, and members of Like Faith all gathered for the grand opening of the new Hurricane Fitness Park in Pine Bluff. We've got a walking track. We've got tic-tac-toe and golf and hopscotch and putting greens and putt-putt stations. And we've, we're introducing disc golf to our community. Who knew working out could be this much fun? Well, senior pastor Derek Easter did as he says he not only wanted to strengthen the members of the Pine Bluff community physically, but also spiritually as well. To offer a safe place for people to come, work out, enjoy the outdoors, to a, a, a place to show goodwill and love and to be a light in our community. 
Easter says he knows the gun violence in Pine Bluff is no secret. So this park also offers another resource for youth and adults to have a place to congregate safely. We wanted to be very intentional about making a strategic investment in our community, realizing that if change is going to come, we have to do it. And so we wanted to build something that's going to give people a safe space for them to come and fellowship and grow and communicate and improve our uh, fit physical fitness. And for members of the Pine Bluff community like Lucretia Goins, she loves that the park is neighborhood friendly and easy accessible. It's a lot of kids over here in this community and you know they can just be right here instead of the parents having to travel across town to you know make sure they enjoy activities they can just be right here and have fun. Easter says the park took about two years to finish and was approximately $250,000. But every dime was worth it when you can see the excitement on everyone's faces. It's just exciting. I want everybody to come out and witness it for themselves and see how good it is. In Pine Bluff, Rebecca Brown, THV 11 News. Well, it sure looks like a lot of fun, Rebecca. Hurricane Fitness Park will be open every week from Monday through Saturday, starting at 6 a.m. until dark. And on Sunday, it'll open up right after the morning service. Leaders in Pine Bluff once again pushing for change as the number of homicides continues to grow. So far, there have been 22 homicides this year. Leaders in the city are working together in new ways to end gun violence. Now, GVI, or Group Violence Intervention, is teaming up with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission to host nonviolence youth summits. It's not the court's responsibility, it's not law enforcement, it's not the mayor's, it's all of us together saying that we want Pine Bluff to be a safe city. Because they are our tomorrow, they are our today. By attacking it as in the young age, then it gives them a foundation. The MLK Commission hosted a nonviolent summit on Thursday, hoping that education and open conversations can help. The Little Rock Police Department is investigating an officer involved shooting on Saturday. The shooting occurred near the intersection of Mabelvale Pike and Mabelvale Circle. The police department says one person has been hospitalized with life threatening injuries. We'll continue to keep you updated on air and on THV11.com as soon as we learn more. Hot Springs police have arrested a second suspect from a 2021 homicide. 58 year old Lee Oliver Count Sr. was arrested Friday and is being held without bond at the Garland County Detention Center. The arrest comes from a call police received in May of 2021. They arrested James Barron about a month after. Both Barron and Counts are charged with first degree murder. Still ahead tonight at 10, origami sake in Hot Springs makes the wine originally made in Japan for thousands of years. Started by Matt and Ben Bell, no relation, the duo spent time in Japan lurking how to make the drink. Now the brewery is already distributing their bottles. And even though they're making sake half a world away from where the drink originated, they say they want Arkansas to be the destination for American sake production. Same question for why Napa Valley, right? So Napa Valley had the resource of the region that would grow really varietals of grapes that were ideal for making world-class uh, wine. Uh, we had the same benefits here in the state. We'll give you a closer look at how the wine is made behind the scenes at Origami Sake. That's tonight at 10. And still ahead, saying goodbye to an Arkansas legend. Remembering the man called the human vacuum cleaner, Brooks Robinson, when we come back. And we're tracking some changes coming up to your forecast in three minutes.